As Michigan's most powerful and influential voice for business, the Michigan Chamber of Commerce stands ready to serve you. Go to mychamber.com, that's M-I-C-H-A-M-B-E-R.com to learn more now. What's good, listeners? On the Line is on hiatus, but we'll be back next week with season two and brand new stories to inform your life. In the meantime, let's talk about the price of everything. Costs as of late are not feeling good for my summer plans. Inflation hit another 40-year high this summer. The Fed raised interest rates again. There's debate on whether a recession is on its way. And while gas prices have dropped, I'm still hesitant to drive around for fun these days. What I am doing is trying to follow tips two of our reporters shared back in February on how to cope and thinking about how we got here. This week, we revisit that conversation in case it might help you too. Check out our show notes for the latest updates on price increases and make sure to hop on with us again next week. Here it is. Everything's going up except my salary. Well, I stopped buying chicken breasts because they just kind of got too much for my budget. Everything is just really, really, really expensive. If you've been hitting the grocery store or getting gas or just generally spending money to live your life, you've probably felt that pinch in your wallet lately. When I went to the store, I mean, some of the things that I regularly purchase, you know, climbed a dollar or more um, from the regular price. That's Regina Salmi of Grand Rapids. We spoke to her about the prices she's seen, along with some Detroit grocery store shoppers like Patricia Oliver and Crystalyn Johnson, who you also heard there. They had a lot to say about the rising costs of feeding your family right now. I just remember being honestly shocked. You know, I I live on a budget anyway. What we're really talking about is the inflation we're currently seeing in industries across the globe. A decrease in the purchasing power of money. Your dollar not going as far as it did before. There's a lot of reasons we're here, namely the pandemic. It isn't just a demand, it's also supply. But the Midwest is being hit harder by inflation than other parts of the U.S., which just hit a 40-year high. As part of that, economists predict food prices will be high for the next year. Meanwhile, Michiganders have to grapple with making rent and buying clothes. And of course, there's our auto industry being impacted. So on this week's episode, we break down how we got here, how bad it's going to get, and what you can do to save some dollars and stay afloat. I'm Kerry Jr. II, and this is On The Line. So on this episode, I spoke with two of our reporters, and they happen to share the name Susan. First, there's our reporter who goes by Sue. Sue Salaski, food writer uh, and restaurant reporter for the Detroit Free Press. And then there's the other Susan who does go by Susan. I'm Susan Tompor, and I'm a financial columnist at the Detroit Free Press, and I write about inflation, the markets, and other hiccups in the economy. So to start off, when have people started kind of noticing that something was happening with our economy? Well, the economy uh, went, go back to the beginning of the pandemic, it went into a deep recession. Financial columnist Susan Tompor. In April of 2020, and that is because of the pandemic and the shutdowns that occurred. What happened after that is massive stimulus money flowed into the economy, and we went from double-digit unemployment to 4% unemployment by the end of 2021. Noticeably, at the end of December, we saw a 7% increase um, in the CPI measure of inflation year over year, and that is huge. CPI stands for Consumer Price Index. It's the average change over time for prices of consumer goods. And it's scaring people right now as to how they're going to pay their bills. Uh, There was a study, a consumer survey that was done by the University of Michigan that I wrote about earlier, and I was actually a little bit surprised. They said people were more worried about inflation than they were about employment. Now, part of what makes up the CPI measure are goods like gas and food. I think people started seeing it probably towards the end of the summer, food prices-wise, and and in grocery stores. Food writer Sue Salaski. 
A lot of people complained about the price of beef, you know, the price of ground round, which is up about 13% year over year. And I believe, you know, Susan mentioned that the overall inflation, you know, uh, for December um, towards the end of the year jumped up to 7%. Well, food prices for the year uh, jumped up 6.5%. So everything is up. Chicken's up 10%. Bacon is up 18%. Breakfast cereals, 6%. You know, ground beef typically can go a a long way. You can make things like chili. You can make things, you know, other casserole dishes. And people often look to that as as a savings and a way to stretch their meals. But they they're looking at higher prices just across the board. So how does the consumer price index compare across the country? At the end in December for the year, uh, the Midwest was up 7.5% compared to the U.S., which was up, the CPI was up 7%. So we're a lot stronger um, in terms of these price hikes. Uh, One thing that was interesting is it's a 10% price hike in Detroit for food. Uh, Part of the reason, uh, you know, of course, is competition. And But the other part, uh, according to a PNC economist that I talked to, is the Midwest labor force. Um, many people had dropped out of the labor force, uh, and he noted that Michigan is actually worse off in the states um, because its labor force is still 3.4% smaller than it was in February 2020. So if there are fewer people in the workforce, Um, employers are having to pay more money, and that can be contributing to inflation. What are the other things that are impacting inflation? That's an excellent question, because it isn't just a demand, it's also supply. The government needed to shore up the economy with stimulus payments. Part of the price, though, was um, the prices went up because demand went up. But on the supply side, supplies were cut. Uh, Many of our products are uh, purchased from overseas. When the COVID Outbreaks would occur in factories. Manufacturing wasn't going on. Um, So that drove up a lot of uh, costs in the auto industry. We had a semiconductor shortage that really drove up new car prices. There was uh, much traffic uh, shut down at the ports. You know, one thing that has been sort of hidden for consumers that will definitely come out front in 2022 is so many of the families were getting these child tax credit payments every month. Um, and that was $250 or $300 for each child per month from July through December. Some might get them later in the year, but right now the uh, Congress is holding back the Build Back Better Act. That plan included an extension on the child tax credit benefits. And the reason that's important is if you don't have that extra money, you're really going to be paying attention to those prices. The stimulus money isn't there, which will help a little bit with inflation, but it doesn't help the mother and dad who are out there shopping and trying to feed their kids uh, a good meal. Are we talking dollars, cents? What does that look like? How, how much is it uh, increasing by? In, in terms of food costs, I mean, I remember paying probably about, um, I don't buy a, a ton of ground beef, but say about $3 a pound. Most people are looking at $5 or more, unless you can get it on sale somewhere. Um, And there are bargains to be had. Whoa. I mean, so I don't, I don't purchase a lot of meat when I go grocery shopping. So I hadn't been paying attention, but whoa, those are, that's, that's a lot. I bought an orange yesterday for 75 cents each. You know, it's an orange, it's 75 cents, but if you have a, I bought two, so two you can buy, but if you're buying them for a whole family, that really does add up really fast. Thankfully, this orange was good, but sometimes, you know, Sue, some of those oranges aren't so good. <laughs> That's true. And you get really upset if you're paying 75 yeah. cents for a bad orange. Right. And and that price of that orange is up. Uh, citrus prices are, are up this year by, quite, this is citrus season. And uh, the prices, I believe, I want to say about a 6% increase in, in a lot of citrus, mainly uh, mainly oranges. I, I talked to a, a, a mother, a, a family, of, she was feeding a family of eight, and she had mentioned to me that she was going to probably start conserving on milk because milk prices went, went up some. I, you know, most most of it's about $3 a gallon, um, but, you know, some other ones are, you know, a little bit pricier. Um, so it's really impacting people in, in, in many different ways. 
I heard similar sentiments this week outside Detroit's Meyer on 8 Mile. Have you noticed the change in prices over the last oh, yeah. year? Mm -hmm. Of course. Everything's going up except my salary. Okay, right. Okay, okay. And, you know, I get emails that say, you know, but, uh, some people are like, my groceries have doubled. Um, have you noticed the price of this? Um, I paid more for a loaf of bread than I've paid for a loaf of bread in two years, three years. Uh, every month, it's about $150 more. $150 more? Yeah. To what you're used to paying. Right. How long has it been like this for you? About a year now. Okay. I'm going on a year now. Yeah. It's getting worse and worse. Because uh, one, one industry analyst I talked to uh, said that we could probably expect um, this to be, the food prices to be high for the next 12 months. After the break, how bad is it going to get? and how the free press can help you stretch your dollars. As Michigan's leading statewide business advocacy organization, the Michigan Chamber of Commerce is on the job every day standing up for job providers in the legislative, political, and legal arenas. We are the unified voice of thousands of members who employ over one million Michiganders. We work with trade associations and local chambers of commerce of every size and kind in all 83 counties of the state. We know business in Michigan. Learn more today about how we can protect, connect, and strengthen your business. Whether that's advocating on your behalf at the Capitol, helping meet your informational training and networking needs, or boosting your bottom line visibility and voice, we're on the job for you. Make my chamber your chamber. Go to mychamber.com, that's M-I-C-H-A-M-B-E-R.com, to learn more now. And we're back talking to Free Press financial columnist Susan Tompour and Free Press food reporter Sue Salaski about the inflation we've been feeling at the grocery store and everywhere else for that matter. The big question is, what does the future hold with this inflation? Is this a sign of a recession? No, it's not. Uh, many of the economists are thinking that uh, this year, 2022, we won't have a recession. Susan Tompour, our financial columnist. That's a good question because you wonder, um, you know, if prices go up and people stop spending, uh, will they... Um, lead to job losses. You know, we have a 4%, you know, generally 4% unemployment rate. That's a very good unemployment rate. So many people who want to work are working. Uh, many people who don't want to work quit. So um, it's important to note that if people have jobs, that's really key. So there isn't this thought that um, it will drive a recession. Well, then what what is the worst case scenario exactly? Well, I think in a worst case scenario, and this is one that isn't often discussed, but there was a time when we had stagflation where we had high prices and high unemployment. I think that, to me, would be a, one of the worst cases. That's, many economists are saying that's not going to happen um, this time around. I also think the pandemic is another worst case scenario because if we get something where people really can't be working or um, they don't want to be going out, whether it's mandated or not, it doesn't matter where people are afraid or they're unable to because they're physically sick. Um, I think the best case scenarios do depend on this virus getting under control. Is there any indication of how much higher prices are going to go up? You know, I tried to uh, get that from an economist earlier, and uh, she really was reluctant to say. One of the things she said about food prices that's hard to judge is so much of it also depends on the weather, and that's also very difficult to predict. Um, and I also think they don't really know. Um, so it is hard to say, um, you know, how much things keep going up. I guess maybe another thing that uh, could happen would be uh, wages have to skyrocket for some reason to keep people employed, um, to keep people coming to work if they um, companies face more pressure. Uh, well, that's a good thing for the worker. Um, if things really spiral, if wages uh, start climbing rapidly, that does uh, drive up costs. How soon could we see prices go down? 
Good question. <laughs> Go, Sue. You take that one. <laughs> yeah, that is a good question. I don't think anybody here, you know, the crystal ball is... Uh, Sue Shalaski, our food writer. I mean, I know that this the industry analyst uh, predicted it, you know, high prices for, actually, he said for the next 12 to 18 months. Susan, did you have a response? Yeah. In terms of when prices would come down, I think... Um, Often they don't, you know. I mean, they they could stop going higher. You do see prices come down a little bit sometimes with gas prices when you're at the pump. But a lot of times, you know, when rents go up, rents keep going up or um, car prices are up. I think uh, used car prices, some people are saying, are likely to start coming down. So, you know, some of that, um, some of the economists are thinking that that will be coming down by the end of the year. That depends, again, on this semiconductor issue and, and some of the other issues that are going on um, in the factories as well. One thing that's important to note is that there is some hope, and some are thinking that maybe by year end, uh, some of this inflation... That's generally speaking, not specific to food. ...will stop being at a 7% rate and perhaps go down to 3% or so by the fourth quarter. At least that's what the PNC economist had suggested to me. What are the experts predicting is going to change that will alter that so that we are at 3% by the end of the year? I think what they're looking at here is uh, perhaps the pandemic easing up, you know, where we'll have more people willing to go back to work. So that puts less pressure on wages. The Federal Reserve has a minor role. I I say minor, but it's important. Their role is to uh, start increasing rates, not to slam on the brakes and shut down the economy. That's the, the risk here. You know, the Fed has to move slowly. You know, if they work on that supply chain and we get uh, some more uh, product into the pipeline, that should help too. But if the pandemic is gone, people will also have more outlets where they can spend their money. They're not necessarily driving up the cost of goods. Very, very important uh, to note that Not everything uh, works out, as some of these forecasts say. But I think it is also good to think that maybe there are some things that will help people. What are our officials doing to help uh, citizens with this issue? One economist that I talked to mentioned, of course, that if inflation kept going out of control, it would depend on policy. One of the things uh, that they're trying to do maybe is with the Fed, you know, putting a little bit of pressure on the Fed to try to raise rates. Um... There's not really a lot they can do. I mean, uh, in the late December, I think uh, President Biden uh, made a very public pronouncement that he was going to get some of these uh, cargo ships unloaded, get the trucks out there. You know, there were some rule changes that were agreed to. Uh, So whether that helped or not, I don't know. Um, But it, it seemed like it did free up some things. The blame you know, if this thing goes out of control, will definitely be with President Biden and, and the GOP is going to take that to its advantage. Um, that's that's a, a definite. I, I do see that in my emails. My emails can get very political very fast. So I think readers are really, you know, looking for ways to save. And that brings us to a new effort from the free press to try to help. You know, we're we're trying to, um, with this grocery project, you know, trying to offer ways to save, too. Could you just talk about the project that you're working on? Well, we started in January. Um, we thought um, we should just, you know, check, a, a start price checking a market basket of goods. Some basic things, bread, milk, uh, bacon, ground beef, butter, just to see, you know, is it st- still increasing? I mean, we started in January, and I think... The first thing that I noticed, um, and it was just maybe like last week, I noticed the price of, of butter, of a name brand butter, went up by a dollar a pound. And that was within three weeks of checking the price. So we're, we're just keeping an eye on prices. We're going to be going to, um, you know, randomly selected stores, letting people know what's increasing, um, what to watch for, what's decreasing. What are we seeing, you know, bargains on? What What's coming down? Um, and with that, we're going through offering them ways to, you know, little tips along the way to, to save, um, on their groceries. Sue, can I, can I ask Sue something? Sue, what about that butter? What do you think it's because the prices were lower at the end of December as they were encouraging people to bake for the holidays? Or do you have a feeling for why that went up? That's a pretty big jump. 
You know, one of the tips that one of my readers gave me one time was about this freezing of butter. And I swear that's what we do. We buy it, you know, when it's, uh, it'll go down in price around uh, the spring holidays, around Easter, and we load up, we watch the price of butter. I mean, it's kind of crazy, but, um, you know, we buy it when it's really low priced and freezing it. I don't know. What's your opinion on freezing butter, Sue? I have 10 pounds of butter in my freezer right now. (laughs) I'm not, and I'm not kidding you. Well, you bake a lot, and I have wow. six, uh, yeah, and I have six pounds of bacon in my freezer because I got it at a really great price. But you're right; it's watching those things. It's watching when things are on sale that is really going to save you a lot of money at the grocery store. What other things can everyday people do to help ease this the stress and the pain, the financial burden that this inflation is causing? Well, I think one of the things that people do do is they uh, eat out a little bit less. And I think there we're lear- we learned that in the pandemic. And perhaps, you know, uh, there is a, a great savings for making simple meals at home. You know, roast your own chicken uh, it tastes better than, you know, just picking up that rotisserie chicken. And I think you get a lot more meat. You know, what I find to do is often you don't want to do a recipe based on just what you want to do, but maybe you want to look at something um, that's on sale, you know, maybe when you're shopping, pick that up and then find the recipe online for something that you uh, already purchased. Sometimes that's a little bit easier uh, to get the thing on sale instead of, you know, deciding, well, I want um, lobster tails for Valentine's Day. Boy, that's going to you know, if you want to do it, you're going to pay a lot of money to do that. So a lot of the stores have, um, um, you know, loyalty or reward programs, and they put out digital coupons um, every week and or specials every week. And it's a really good idea if you, to watch for those those bargains. I mean, that's that is where you are going to save money. Another thing I noticed is the stores where you shop. Um, I- recently purchased some Valentine's candy for uh, for my neighbors. I like to give out Valentine's treats. And I bought a big box of candy at BJ's. It was $17.99. At Target, the same box was $21.99. Um, huge difference. So if you uh, notice something that's a good price somewhere, you know, you pick it up. Uh, as Sue says, those are a couple of the things we do, I'll give you one third last tip, and Sue's the expert on this, but I'm just sharing my own personal experience. I don't do a lot of grocery shopping. We send my husband. I am an impulse buyer. <laughs> I love <laughs> I love to buy anything new. If the product is new, if Oreo has a new flavor, I'm putting it in the grocery cart. I'm putting everything in there. And he is much better at sticking with a list. Not as exciting when, when he comes back from the grocery store. <laughs> no, nobody's too excited when he comes back, but you know, it's you can't live like that every week. Every week you can't live like where you're throwing everything in a grocery cart. That's really helpful information. I have to do some self-reflecting for myself in terms of grocery shopping. Thank you both, Susan Tom Poor, Susan Solaski for talking to me. We appreciate uh, your time that you took. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. This episode was produced by me and Darcy Moran with help from Tad Davis. Jeanette Delgado and Marianne Struman are our executive producers and Peter Batia is our editor. The music for the show is called Fort Trumbull and was produced by DJ Lost Boy. Thanks as always for listening. And if you like the show, go ahead and leave a rating, uh, subscribe to the show, share the show with your friends, and we'll see you next week.